Hello friends, this video on algebraic expressions part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have learned about addition and subtraction, you might be wondering, is it also possible that we can multiply different algebraic expressions again? What would be the terms and conditions or what would be the limitations of multiplying algebraic expressions? Because we saw that as far as addition and subtraction is considered, there only the like terms could be added or subtracted. So what about multiplication? So let's check them out. So even before we learn about the rules of how to multiply expressions, the first question that comes to our mind is why do we even need to multiply expressions? So do we ever come across such situations where we need to multiply algebraic expressions? Yes, we do. So let us take some examples from our day to day life. So let's say that there are four kids and you thought of giving some toffees to each of the kids. Now let's say that you decided to give three toffees to each kid. So if I ask you how many total toffees do you need to give it to all the four kids? So to one kid you gave three. So for four kids you need three into four. So three into four is twelve. So that means you need a total of twelve toffees so that you can distribute three toffees to each kid. Now in this case I assumed that I know the number of toffees that I wanted to distribute. Now let's say that if I do not know exactly how many number of toffees are to be given to each kid. So in that case, what do we do? So under such scenarios, when the exact number is not known, maybe I am not distributing the toffees, somebody else is distributing. I do not know exactly how many toffees will he give to each kid. So in that case, we assume that let's say that he gives x number of toffees to each kid. So x is again a variable. So x can take any values depending on the situation. So if x toffee is given to each kid, so how many total toffees do you need? You need x into 4, that is 4x. So you need total 4x toffees. Now if your x is 2, then you need 8 toffees. If your x is 5, then you need 20 toffees. So as the value of x changes, the value of 4x also changes. So how do you get this 4x? By multiplying two expressions. x is an expression, 4 is also an expression. You multiplied the two, you got 4x. Look at this scenario. You are given a square and you have to find out the area of a square. Now again, we precisely do not know what is the length of each side of the square. So we assume that length of each side is x because in a square all sides are of equal length. So we assume that each side is x in length. So what would be the area of the square? So the area would be x into x that is x squared. So what did we do here? We multiplied two expressions. So x is an expression. So we multiplied two monomials basically. Think of another scenario. So let's say that you have a box. So the box is in the form of a cuboid where the length, breadth and height are different. So let's say that this is the length, this is the breadth and this is the height and they are all of different uh, measurements. Now, if I ask you to find out the volume of this cuboid, that is the total space that is enclosed within the cuboid. So, how will you find out the volume? By multiplying length, breadth and height. So, this length, so here in this case, I do not know the exact measurements. I have just assumed that the length is L, breadth is B and height is H. So, the volume becomes L into B into H. So, again, we are multiplying expressions. Let's say that there is an arrangement, so you have some good number of uh, students and they make an arrangement where they stand in rows. So there are a total of five rows and there are five students in each row. So that means like, let's call this as row number one. This is row one, row two, row three, row four and row five. So the students have arranged themselves in five rows and they have made sure that there are five students in each row. Now if I ask you to find out what is the total number of students. Now one good option is you can start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. But that is a very silly method to find out the total number of students and also a time consuming method. So what is a better method of finding out the total number of students. So what you would do is the number of rows. So here you have 5 rows and number of students in each row. So here you have 5 students in each row. So you get 25. 
So what you actually did, you multiplied. So now this was a scenario, this was a smaller example where I knew that there are five rows and there are five students in each row. Now let's say I do not know the exact number of rows or we can say that the number of rows is x. So f x is the number of rows and if there are y students in each row, then the total number of students would be x y where x is the number of rows and y is the number of students in each row. So in that case x into y is the total number of students. So you see there these are some examples where we see that we tend to multiply expressions to each other. So we understand that there is a need to multiply expressions. So now let's learn how do we multiply Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.